Hello everyone, my name is Ivan, and in this third episode of Overhauled In-Depth, we'll be going a bit more into detail with the new derailment physics, the all-new couplers and air hoses, as well as the comms radio, along with a few related things coming with the release of our free major update, Derail Valley Overhauled, on May 21st. We'll start with something I personally feel is one of the biggest changes on its own to the game, the Derail Physics Rewrite. As one of the most unfair mechanics in certain situations, look at you flat cars, it was also the first large task on the to-do list that eventually defined Overhauled as the massive update that it's become. Gone forever is the slow, careful crawl along the tracks. Gone are the days of the flat car menace. Now is the age of going fast. Things around the valley have significantly sped up with Overhauled. Overall, average safe speeds along the lines have nearly doubled allowing you to go much faster around turns and tight mountain passes. You'll have to, too, if you wish to try and make the new updated time bonuses. We're well aware of the speed limit map created by the community, but now, next to the tracks, proper speed limit signs have made a return. These signs, spread out along the rails, show the safe speed of the track ahead, in tens of kilometers per hour. The signs do have a bit of a safety margin built in, so the speed on the sign may not be quite the speed where the derailment occurs. Each sign can also have a second and third placard, some indicating a change in grade in the line, while another indicates a direction that the speed limit applies to. I'd very much suggest reading the signs booklet in-game for further information on how to read the signs along the rails. Don't feel too safe though, as derailments still can occur easily when not paying attention. The feel for when you're about to fall off the tracks remains almost unchanged from before, but is simply less unfair. In the event you do derail, your new best friend is going to be the all-new comms radio. The comms radio replaces the junction remote for switch tracks, but adds quite a few more features. You can cycle through functions of the remote by scrolling on PC, or by holding use and flicking your control stick left or right in VR. The switch function is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to switch junctions just as before, by pointing and clicking at the switch pole, though sometimes you may find it easier to just walk up to the switch pole and throw it by hand, by clicking on the lever at its base. Clear allows you to clear derailed cars off the track for a fee. Many players will be very happy to see you can use the re-rail function to bring derailed cars and locomotives back on track, for a fee of course. The further you need to move the derailed car, the more you'll have to pay to re-rail it. This does, however, mean that if you do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You may be able to save the job, provided you have the funds. Sometimes it's still worth it to deliver wrecked cars, if it was a well-paying job. If you're short on funds, you'll be able to get back to the nearest station by choosing the crew option, which, provided you've purchased Bob's garage key and unlocked the crew vehicle, will allow you to spawn, spoiler, the hand car, so you can just use some good old elbow grease to get back to civilization. There, you might pick up a rescue locomotive, or do shunting jobs for some quick re-railing cash. If you had any items left in a derailed train, fear not, as now they'll automatically be sent to lost and found sheds or to your player's home. More importantly, important items such as your wallet, the world map, and the comms radio can always be retrieved via the pause menu buttons, regardless of where they were located. On that note, if you leave any items in a train and close the game, Instead of finding them on the ground next time you start the game, which would happen in previous builds, now they'll be right where you left them, safe and sound. In general, accidentally losing items is now a lot more difficult to do, and no longer an issue. Possible for the first time ever in a train simulator is the all-new coupling system, hand-operated and particularly immersive in VR. Implementation of these new couplers also involved revamping a lot of the game's coupling physics, making it possible to correct the distance between cars, something you'll immediately notice. The couplers are of the highly interactive buffers and chain type, mostly seen throughout Europe. To couple two cars together, you'll simply pick one of the chains, drag it to the other car's hook, and drop it on. From there, tighten the screw to tighten the coupling together. The cars are now coupled. In order to be able to move the coupled cars, however, you'll need to release the brakes first. The air brake simulation, too, has been completely redone, now realistically propagating pressure throughout the entire train, connected via hoses. The locomotive's compressor now takes time to pressurize the whole system, requiring usage of extra locomotives in long trains, just to keep the brakes responsive enough. The air brake pressure is important, 
because without it, the train brakes are locked. By cleverly manipulating the brake valves between the cars, you can now launch cars rolling, or kick them, without brakes, and time them to stop just in time when shunting. Don't worry, if you make a mistake and leave a valve open somewhere, you'll be alerted by a light on the dash. Slamming on the brakes is no longer recommended, as the excessive pressure loss that overcomes the locomotive's compressor can bring the whole train to a halt. Even though buffers now cushion the impacts between cars and locomotives when braking, as they should, light use of the train brakes is still encouraged simply in order to keep the repressurization as short as possible. To help with that, we've also added an alternative way to brake, independent brakes. These brakes, only available in locomotives, will decelerate only the locomotive, but are much more agile to release. So, depending on your train size, you'll want to use both train brakes and independent brakes intermittently for the most efficient operation. All this just makes driving and shunting in the valley a lot more engaging and fun. With that, we've of course removed the autocoupler previously present in locomotive cabs, and plan to introduce it later as an in-game upgrade. If you'd like to support our work, you can now buy our new soundtrack on Steam. It features the music we made for the Derail Valley trailers, as well as some extra tracks, and can be had for $9.99. All revenue from it goes directly to further development of Derail Valley. Derail Valley itself is available too on Steam and the Oculus Store, and you can pre-purchase it now while waiting for the update. We'll also be doing a giveaway of a limited number of Derail Valley Steam keys. For more details on how to be included, see the link in the description. That's all for this episode. On the next episode of Overhauled In-Depth, we'll be going over the world rework. For now, drive safe, and we'll see you in the valley.